Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to give you three quick tips to make your Flask apps better. So these are pretty simple things that you can do and they'll probably apply to at least one of the apps that you're working on. But before we get into that, if you wanna learn even more tricks from me, just make sure you get my Flask cheat sheet. I have it here. You can go to prettyprintit.com slash flask cheat sheet to get this, or you can click on the link in the description below. Uh, just make sure you get this after you finish watching the video. Let's get into the three tips. So the first tip is to use git or 404 when you're performing queries like this. So this can be used for dot git queries and dot first queries, but I have dot git here. So what's happening in this route is it expects a customer ID and I only have five customers in the database, one through five. So if I put one through five there, everything should work. So as an example, I'll go to user number five and I see that user's information, number four, and I can do it for three and two as well. But if I go to user number six, which I don't have, I get an error. So to avoid errors like this, when the user puts in a value that won't be found in the database, you can use git or 404, or you can use first or 404. So it's an easy change. So just go to the query and add or 404 to the end of git. So git or 404 with underscores in between the words. So now when I do this, my app won't crash when it can't find a customer. So now when I go to number six, I simply get the not found page. And of course I can modify this not found page by using an error handler, or I can just leave it as it is, depending on what your app is. But now it works for both cases where the user is found and when the user is not found. So the second tip is organizing the data that you send to render template. So right here, as an example, I'm passing four things. And as you can see, this line is getting long. I can break down this line a little more, but instead what I'll do is I'll create a dictionary and I'll call it context. You can call this whatever you want. And each key will represent each value that I want to pass. So I want to pass a name. So I'll just have customer.name. And then I want to pass the address. the state, and finally the postal code. Okay, so I wanna pass all that data to the template and it doesn't matter how much data I have, all I have to do is pass this one context dictionary. So to do that, first let me remove everything that I'm passing here. And I can't simply do something like this, so like context equals context, because then it won't work. So as an example, when I go to user number one, no data appears. It's looking at things with these names, so name, address, state, postal code, but when I pass the context dictionary, it can't find them. So the way to handle this is to convert this context dictionary to those parameters. So to do that, you just put two stars in front of context, so star, star, and now when you do this, it works. So it takes everything that's in that context dictionary and uses them like they are parameters, just like when you pass them directly to render template. So this should make your code a little more organized. You can put everything in one big dictionary and then pass only that dictionary to render template. The third tip is how to delete data when you want to perform a query to get that data first. So what I mean is, in my case, I have two models. I have a customer model and I have an order model. So let's say I wanted to delete some orders from the order table, but I only wanted to delete orders that had a certain type of customer. So in this case, I'll delete some orders that have a customer from a certain state. So you can't write a direct query to delete from orders using the customer table because you can only delete from one table at a time and Flask SQL Alchemy won't know what table you want to delete from when you use two tables in the delete query. So what you need to do is first you need to query for all the order IDs that you want to delete and then you use those order IDs in a subquery and then delete from those. So I'll show you what that means. So first I need to get all the order IDs that I want to delete. So we'll call this order IDs as a variable and I'll do db session query and I'm going to query for order ID so order dot ID and then I'm going to join the customer table because I want to delete from certain customers and then I'll add a filter so first the filter is going to be a filter to check to see which state the customer belongs to so customer dot state and 
we'll say the customer is from California. So what this is going to do is it's going to join these two tables and uh, Flask or Alchemy will take care of this joint automatically because of the column, the foreign key column. And then the filter is going to look for customers that are in the state of California. And in my database, I have three customers from the state of California. So let's just take a look at the database now. So if I select star from customer, I have three customers in California. So customer one, customer two, and customer three. And then each customer has nine orders. So I wanna delete the orders from the customers in California. So because they each have nine orders, 27 total orders will be deleted. So to verify that when we run this, I'll return that value. So now that we have all the order IDs in this query, so we're not calling dot first or dot all or anything, it's just this query. So up until the filter, we add a second query and first I'll put the lead count because I wanna know how many records get deleted. And then I'll perform a query on only the order table because you can only delete from one table at a time. So nowhere will customer be referenced in this query. So now I just want to filter and I'll say order dot ID in and when you use in you have to put an underscore after in and then i'll say order ids so this query that i have here and i'll use it as a subquery so dot subquery with parentheses and then after that i'll simply delete so dot delete and this takes in an argument called synchronized session this will just prevent Flash SQL Alchemy from trying to update things at the same time that is deleting. So we'll just set this to false. So synchronize session equals false. And then that should be it. So if I can spell it correctly. So everything should look good. And we just want to return the delete count. So stir delete count. We'll run the app again. And then we'll go to this delete route and we're expecting to see 27 returned. So slash delete, and this should be order IDs, just like that. And I see 27. So those were the three tips that I wanted to share with you today. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the tips, feel free to leave a comment down below. Make sure you get that cheat sheet that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time.